Hi everybody, I'm Christy from uh, Public Sociology. Welcome to this Answering the Question Pals podcast. Here today to talk to you about answering the question and with me today is Jenny. Hello, I'm Jenny. I am fourth year theatre and film student. Great, thanks Jenny. Um, so, answering the question. I think, as we'll all know, the first step it's kind of in the title, read the essay question. So the first step of making sure you answer the question is read the essay question, the assignment question, and break it down. So we're going to want to break it down and look at the words that are used in that question to identify what we need to do in the essay. So the first part of that really is identifying what we could refer to as task or academic keywords. So they'll often be words like contrast, compare, analyze, examine, and they give you clues as to what direction you're going to take your essay in. And there's actually a really great resource on the Effective Learning Services website. So you can just search for ELS through the library, QMU, and they've got a bunch of guides. And one of those guides is called Academic Keywords and Essay Titles. And that actually breaks down for you what some of these words mean. Like, so for example, let's say you had a question which, which was analyze the differences in the these two theories. Analyze would mean that you need to examine in very close detail, identifying important points and chief features. So I think that's a really good starting point for answering your question. Now there's other aspects of breaking down the question, which I think Jenny has some information about for us. Yes, thanks. So as Christy explained to us, the first step when breaking down a question is identifying the key words and the task words. The second step is identifying the content words in your question, and they are specific to either your degree or the main topic or area that you are discussing. For example, in my degree, I deal a lot with feminism, so this could be an example of a broad area which a question can be asked about. And then the last part is identifying limiting words, and they are words that further define the topic and indicate the aspects in which you narrow down the focus. So if we take the feminism example, for me, that could be identify something in the first or the second wave of the feminism, or it can say about the whole history, or it could be a specific play that was written for a specific decade of the feminism movement. And it just specify exactly what I have to focus on in that broad area. And now that when we understand how to break down the question, it is time to think about how to actually plan it according to the question, which Christy will explain to you further. Yeah, so that's great. I mean, as, as we said there, you get these clues, these um, pointers from your title. You know, you, you've got the, the, the type of essay it is, and then as, as um, Jenny's told us about our content and limiting words, so from that, you want to make a plan for your essay, even though it's tempting to just start writing and just start getting out some of the information, you know, you need to make a plan. It's so desperately important. So and planning your essay, it always has to be in relation to the question. So each section that I would plan, I would always be thinking back, how does it refer to the question? How does it, for example, contrast these differing theories or these differing theorists? And as part of that as well is thinking about the different sections I'm writing. How am I going to make them link and flow together? Now, often that can be because you think about your argument and then you could have your different steps and stages of your argument. But sometimes you're tempted to do that in a narrative, you know, or chronological way. What they really want from university, I have found, is for you to sort of formulate an argument and an argument that links, that has different points of information and that those points of information link together. So I think that's why it's really important for you to have a clear structure. And, you know, part of that is staying within the parameters of the question. 
So again, it's the temptation to just write and just start writing all the information, all the things you've learned. You've learned so many things from your class. You want to show that you've done the work and you've learned it. But if there's too much info, your argument or your point gets lost. So you really want to be staying within the parameters of the question. And you really do that by constantly referring back to the question. So if I've written a paragraph, the point I'm making the paragraph, how does that relate to the question? And personally, I would always include a sentence or two that says that, you know, I, this is the point I've made and that relates to this wider question, the wider argument in this way. And that keeps you, I think, focused and I think that gives you the best chance of effectively answering the question and getting the best, you know, getting the, the best marks that you, you can achieve. And I think also as well, you know, I'm talking maybe about the body of the essay, about these different sections and how they link together, but a hugely important part of that and a part of this planning that kind of guides you and the rest of it is really um, thinking about your introduction and conclusion, which I think you've got some information about for us, Jenny. Yes, thank you. So as Christy was saying that it's important to plan your whole essay in a broad way, I am going to speak a bit more specifically how you plan your introduction and conclusion in accordance to your question. So let's start with the introduction. I would say that if you can imagine a reverse triangle, it is something of the shape of that. So you start your introduction with a bit of a broader statement, a broader sentence, and then each sentence that you write, it narrows down the topic that you are discussing. And then you are trying to ensure that it addresses the title so in the sentences that you write you try to include the words that are given to you in the essay question and at the end you outline the structure of the essay and this is uh, called or i would call it a bit of a summary of what you are intending to do in your essay so for example it can be something like in this essay i will discuss this uh, i will speak about this i will start with this argument then i will continue with this argument and uh, then i will compare them or i will contrast them or i will examine them it could be anything in that summary it depends what exactly you're planning to do and helpful question to ask yourselves while you're doing that is that is the structure suitable to answer my question do i deviate too much or is it exactly what i need to answer it and now about the conclusion it's another form of summary i would say not a specific summary of the whole essay but in a way a bit shorter one as to what exactly did you achieve in that essay a summary of that so a helpful questions to ask yourselves there are after writing the conclusion does it answer the question have i missed something have i added something more than necessary did i answer it as planned if i had to change it why because honestly, so many times I have written my introduction where I'm like, OK, I'm going to do this, this and that. And then I write my essay and it's either too much or it doesn't flow and I have to change it. <laughs> so why did I change it? And are those changes in the boundaries of the question that I was giving? Now, through your whole essay, ask questions like this of yourself it doesn't have to be the ones that i specifically told you about but just question yourself am i answering the question and am i really staying in the boundaries of the question which i think they are and there is actually an opportunity to test those skills that you learned today which christy will explain further to you yeah no absolutely because um there's a great opportunity actually referred to they're called uh, the formative essays so it's something that's part of this coming from college pals program 
and it's an essay question that um, will be posed to yourselves. It's, it's a short essay, so nothing to be like worried about being overwhelmed with work. But really, it's a formative essay that's going to be being marked by a member of the academic team and returned with feedback, which is quite big because actually, I mean, I personally didn't get any feedback until at least semester two, just with the nature of partly COVID, partly the work that was um, being assigned to us. And I think that can be quite tricky because you don't really know what level you're at, especially coming from college. You know, we're going to come from different institutions to the QMU. You don't know if they've got similar standards, if they've got similar styles. So I would encourage those of you that are listening to really consider trying to engage with that. Even if you engage with it a bit, find it hard and don't, you know, don't finish it. Even that's an opportunity to give yourself an idea of where you struggle and where you might need a little bit more help, you know? There are loads of helpful guides through Queen Margaret, through the Effective Learning Service. So that's ELS through the library. If you click on the library and then ELS, there's actually tons. I think we referred to them a wee bit in this podcast, but I would have a look at those resources and see about maybe trying out this formative essay. Give yourself a wee bit of an idea of where you're at. Before you yes, go. I would definitely second that opinion because when I came, I also didn't know exactly how to write an academical essay and to use that academical English that is asked from us. Mm -hmm. And I definitely was helped a lot by ELS. I learned a lot from them, which later on gave me the opportunity to have good marks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. But I think that's the thing to say at QMU. Everyone's here to be supportive and to help. So if there's any, you know, if there's anything you're unsure about, sure we just reach out and there'll be someone someone who can help you mm -hmm. well then thank you for listening to this episode of coming from college podcasts i hope that you enjoyed it and found some helpful tips for your future assessments and make sure to check out our other episodes bye bye, -bye.